Cubans were well aware of fermented beverages right from the beginning, two or three, four million years ago. Life has then grown up with alcohol. The first generation craft breweries that were so wonderful, like Brooklyn down the road and uh, Sierra Nevada, and Sam Adams were making these wonderful full flavored beers, but they were in essence referencing old world established beer styles. And whether or not people knew what they meant by that tradition, in general it was the tradition of the Rheinheitsgebot, which was the Bavarian Beer Purity Act of 1516, when the Bavarian government mandated for the rest of the world that beer could only be made with water, hops, and barley. Humans have been ingesting alcohol for 10,000 years, so the Rheinheitsgebo and the definition of beer is water, yeast, hops, barley is, is uh, a Johnny completely fad as far as I'm concerned, but it made me research longer history. I learned about Tej, the national drink of Africa, where it was basically honey and it was bittered with geisha root. Jiahu. This uh, beverage is based on tombs and settlements in Neolithic China, going back to 7,000 BC. This is the oldest known fermented beverage that you're having in the history of mankind. This beer is, is kind of a hybrid between a, a beer, a wine, there's grape evidence. Uh, Jiahu has sake rice, uh, and it also has a fruit. You want to talk about well, that? Well, it has hawthorn fruit, and it has grapes, which is interesting because they're probably wild grapes, but none of them were domesticated that we know of. Well, we have tombs in Italy, especially in the Tuscany area, which have produced evidence going back to 800, 700 BC that uh, are, uh, provide a lot of botanical information. And uh, the Etruscans probably had a native beverage to begin with in this period, which uh, involved using hazelnuts, pomegranates, grapes, or raisins. Tree resin. What I love about the, the findings of this Etruscan beer is that, uh, you know, tree resin is a component of this. And as you try this, at the end, that as beer makers and lovers out here, you know that hops brings bitterness to the end of the beer. And when something ends bitter, it makes you want to take another sip of it. <coughs> when something ends malty or sweet, you're less inclined to, to drink a lot of it, which is why I think IPAs are, are so popular uh, uh, right now. But now, as you go around the world, it's the, it's the American craft brewing movement that is, that is inspiring the renaissance of good beer. Italy's got a craft beer scene taking off. Scandinavia, New, uh, Canada, uh, New Zealand. And it was so cool to hear them referencing breweries like Brooklyn or Six Point or Dogfish or uh, you know, Captain Lawrence in, uh, oh. in inspiring them to paint outside the Rheinheitsgebot. We're getting emails now that this little brewery is gaining market share noticeably in the scan data that comes from UPCs in Scandinavia by resurrecting this beer over there. Oh, good. Yeah, great. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, all right. So cheers. cheers. <laughs>